Hello, today we are going to be taking a website that's up in the cloud, or even one locally, and package it as an APK. Now, in the past, there were tools by Adobe, uh, Phone Gap, I think it was called, I used it years ago, where you could give it a URL and it would create an Android app for you. Well, we're going to do that ourselves, so we don't need their services. Uh, so again, we're just going to point it to a URL, uh, but then I'm going to show you how to manipulate this a little bit, change it around. Uh, again, it doesn't have to point to something in the cloud. You could create an entire website and package it right in the app, uh, which is actually what it does, but then it forwards you to a website. But I'm gonna show you some options on that. We're gonna get going on this. Be sure to watch my previous video on building Android apps in the shell. I'm gonna gloss over it here. I'm gonna point you to a project I've created, which has all the instructions, but if you watch the previous video, it will definitely help. If you can't find it, go to filmsbychris.com uh, and there, and it's Chris with a K, link in the description. Just go ahead and search for APK and it should be one of the videos. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's look at, first I'm gonna give you an example. So in my project, I have a, an example script, but I'm gonna take my website here, filmsbychris.com forward slash V7. And I'm gonna type in web to APK and I'm gonna give it my URL. I'll just say v7 here or even filmsarchrist.com since that forwards to that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask me some things. What is the app name? I'll just call it FBK. That's what will show up underneath the icon of the app. Next, it's gonna ask me for the application ID. I'm gonna say com.filmsbychris. And I'll just call it site. Uh, it's kind of standard on Android applications for the first part of this to be your website backwards and then the last part, what app it is. I've always thought that's kind of silly, but that's kind of the standard. We'll go ahead and run that. So what it just did is it went to the website, uh, well, it pulled down the example project from my GitLab, and now it's looking at that website, and my script is going to try to find the fav icon. So you look on my website, I have a little icon right here. It's trying to grab that, and it gives me a list because my website has multiple different ones. I'm just gonna click the one that is the highest resolution that is listed here. Do that, it's gonna pull down that. Now it's going to make multiple copies of that icon for the package. Then it's going to take it and it's gonna to try to push it to the phone. Cause I do have a phone plugged in with ADB and that was successful. So let's go ahead and look at that phone. Let me go ahead and turn on the screen here, unlock it, come on. And go in my applications and you can see right here, FBK with the icon from my website. When I click that, it gives a little load icon and it says loading and then here's my website. And it works just like my website does. So now I can take my website and modify, I can create an entire application in HTML and put it on my web server and then distribute this app. Of course, this is a debug version of the app. You have to sign it and do other things to put it in the app store. But I have a functioning APK that people can install and any changes I make to the site, the app will automatically see that. Okay, so let's play around with that a little bit more. What do we need to know? There'll be a link in the description to this project. But the first part of the README explains how to set up the Android SDK and the tools you need to build this. Uh, I did all this in the previous video, but basically on a De at least Debian-based system, but most Android systems, you should be able to just copy and paste this code into the shell and go through it. And then this, and then here it's cleaning up a little bit. Okay, and then you're ready to build. So how do we build? So let's go ahead and uh, look at this. This is part of the code that's going to change the icon. So basically, you will create a PNG under this directory from this project, and then you'll just copy and paste it to all these different formats here. Uh, it's a little silly, it's supposed to all be different sizes. Again, this is a minimalistic way of doing it, but this is where it's going to look for those icons. My script that we just ran, the place it's most likely to fail is this. If it tries to pull down a fav icon and it fails to do so, it will crash. And we will look at that in a moment. Here we go through some example stuff on just going what files to change, to change the example, the, the name of the um, app, and a few other things. Again, the script does all that, but this is just kind of notes on how to manually do that. And actually, let's go ahead and just go into that. So when I ran my script in the directory I'm in, it created a folder with the app ID. So I'm gonna move into that. That's this directory here. And now what I can do is I can start modifying some of this. So let's go ahead and look at something. So by default, what this app is loading is internal HTML. So it's loading up this index HTML. 
which just, just has some CSS and it loads the icon it pulled down and then it runs JavaScript. And what does that JavaScript do? Let's have a look at that. That JavaScript, all it does is forward you to the site that you inputted. So if I was to comment this out and go back into the HTML, I can modify this. I can uh, take where it says loading and I can have it say something else. I can say, this is awesome, right? I'll save that. Then I'll run my Gradle build. It's going to build that package again. And then I will ADB install that to the device. And here we go, when I click on this now, instead of forwarding to my website, it just loads up that HTML. So you can have the HTML, the whole website in the app. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about internet connections if that was an issue. But a lot of times your internet connections, your, your app's gonna be grabbing stuff from the internet anyway. But I wanted to show you that. You can modify that HTML and that JavaScript and use it however you want and not have to worry about connecting to the internet. Talking about connecting to the internet, I have this set up by default to run as a web browser. What do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and go back into this JavaScript and uncomment that. We will repackage it, push it to the phone again, and run it again. So it loads up my website, and if I was to click on one of these icons, it's actually bringing me to YouTube. Okay, so with your app, you can restrict it to certain domains, uh, which can be important sometimes. I have it set up by default to allow you to click on any link to any domain. So let's go ahead and change that. We will go into the main activities. So Vim inside this package, Vim, app, source, main, Java, com, example, app, the main activity Java. When we come in here, let's go ahead and make this full screen. We have options in here. And here you can see exactly what file it's loading initially. So it's that assets, Android assets, index.html. But you can see also here, I can have it go straight to a website if I don't want to have a local file, I can just do that and it will load up that URL. But what is important is that you have permission for that. If we go Vim and I can list through the files here, here is our WebView client Java. When we looked at look at this, it's giving a host name, right? And here we're saying films by Chris. And again, that's generated when you run my script. Here I'm doing a check, which is kind of unnecessary. What you want to do is, if we wanted to restrict it to only allow for that host name, so Films by Chris, and ignore all other domains, we just change this to true. And it should lock you into that domain. But be aware, if your website pulls assets, JavaScript, maybe fonts, whatever, from other URLs, or you have links that want to go to other domains, this will break that. So. Depending on your situation, you may want to, like in mine, want to go to YouTube, or you may want to set that to, to true, and then it will not allow you to move to other domains. I hope that makes sense. Oops. Now, other things we want to look at. Let's look at another website that actually breaks my script. If I was to go to software here, I have my notes which brings me to my notes page, which does have a fav icon up here. You can see it looks like a little sheet of paper. Let's go ahead and try to use this URL. So I'll copy that URL. I'll move into this directory and I will run my script, which by, by the way, if I haven't already mentioned, on the GitLab page, if we go back to the project overview, that script, once you've set up your Android SDK and everything up here, this first section, you can take this script and you don't have to worry about downloading the rest of the project because when you run this, it will download that project and make the modifications. So this is the APK, Web2 APK that we're running. So Web2 APK, and I'm gonna give it the URL that I just copied to my notes. And when I run this, we'll call it notes, com.filmsbychris.notes. It's gonna ask, it's gonna list the icons, and then I'm gonna choose one. And when we run this, it fails. And so far, every time I've done this, as long as you've installed the SDK and everything properly, this is the only time I ever get an error. And it's because my script is not pulling down the proper um, icon file. 
So let me just look through my files here, .png. Uh, so this file right here, I'm sorry, let's move into our the, the notes one, and let's try that again. Uh, we'll do dot .png. Yes, it's going to be this one here, I believe. If I say, what type of file is this? It's saying it's HTML, and that's why it's crashing. It's expecting it to be an image, a PNG, but it's not. So what we're going to do, we'll just go ahead and open up GIMP. I will create a new icon, or you can find one online. I'll just make it 28, uh, 128 by 128. I will make my brush size smaller, and I will draw a little happy face here. And this will be our new icon. I will export that to Notes, App, not build, source, main, and we're gonna replace this file. Export, replace, export. And if we go back here, now that we've done that, let's go to the project overview, scroll down. Here, we're just going to replace all these icons. Again, this is kind of silly the way I do this because these are all supposed to be different formats and sizes. But again, this is just getting things up and running. We do that, now we should be able to uh, Gradle W Vill, Gradle W build, <laughs> and it should build successfully this time. Okay, and then we should ADB install that. And if we look again at our device, and I go to notes, there is notes with that icon we just created. We click on that, we'll say loading, and then it brings up the notes website. Uh, so that, that's the biggest issue I have come across so far with my script is I try the best to grab a fav icon, but sometimes my script pulls it down wrong. So if you get an error and it's listing issues with the PNG, that is what you have to do. Replace the one icon and then follow the notes to replace all the different icons for different sizes, even though technically these are all the same size. Clear as mud? I hope so. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I use this a lot. Again, if you have a website, it's easy enough for people just to add a shortcut to their home screen with whatever web browser they use. The problem with that is I've had so many times in the past where people update their web browser and the shortcuts disappear. It is so annoying. But if you package an APK, you don't have to worry about that. They can up, upgrade their browser all they want. It's going to be using that web view and your package stays the same. You can modify your website. It will automatically see the changes. And again, you can put it all, put the entire website right inside the APK and not even have to worry about connecting to the internet. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I am not a professional when it comes to Android app development. Uh, my notes here are the minimalistic things I have found to get things running without a bunch of files, without having to use Android Studio. And so if you have issues, I, I don't know if I'll be able to help you, but go ahead and ask below. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to this project. Again, just follow the instructions here on a Linux-based system and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. I also have a Patreon page. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.